I think we're touring a Civil War prison. I think we're going to a bar a former U.S. president used to get hammered at on a regular basis. And we may or may not go to a winery that has llamas. So we'll see how this day turns out. We're getting a little bit of a late start this morning. Well, this afternoon. So yesterday we did the wine tasting. Today we were supposed to do some wine tasting and then some other stuff. Plans keep changing. It's like two or three in the afternoon now. But we're finally leaving. And some of the stuff we were going to do today, we're going to do on a different day. Because they're going to close before we even have a chance to get there. So I think we're touring a Civil War prison. I think we're going to a bar a former U.S. president used to get hammered at on a regular basis. And we may or may not go to a winery that has llamas. So we'll see how this day turns out. Also, there was something said about some barbecue. <clears throat> now, I, you know me, I'm a sucker for barbecue. So we'll just have to see what this day brings. So you guys have a beautiful state here. You really do. It's a lot like... Northern California, to be honest. Um, so similar to Northern California. I, re I really, I see why they moved here. Let's go see what kind of trouble we can get into. I'm just waiting on them. Well, I guess this actually makes sense because, I mean, the rail tracks right here, the tracks yes, are yes, the same exactly. one since, like, 1852. Did you lock it? Mm. You really think of having to build that railroad? This is very fried green tomatoes if you have a Dude, I remember being so sad when like her brother died yeah. as a kid watching that. On November 2nd of 1861, the Confederate government purchased about 16 acres here for a prison. The track included an abandoned three-story cotton mill, a boiler house, six tenements, a superintendent's house, and several smaller buildings. Dude, my southern ancestor that fought, one mm -hmm. of them on my mother's side, was a deserter. Said, f*** this shit, and left. Mm. I don't blame him. Maybe I wouldn't even be alive right here standing here if he hadn't done that. A stockade was erected around the buildings, and the first 120 prisoners arrived on December 9th. By July 1862, most of the Union prisoners of war had been exchanged, leaving only a small contingent of Confederate and Union deserters, political prisoners, and convicts. The facility received no additional military prisoners until October of 1864. Union General Ulysses S. Grant, to further strain Southern resources, slowed the exchange of prisoners in 1864, and beginning in August, stopped the exchanges entirely until February of 1865. In October of 1864, the prison began receiving large numbers of Union soldiers captured on the Virginia battlefields. By early November, the prison, designed to hold about 2,500, became inundated with about 10,000 men. The overcrowded inmates occupied tents and partial underground structures throughout the fall and winter of 1864 to 1865 because most of the buildings had to be used as hospitals. In February of 1865, after about 3,500 prisoners had died from exposure, disease, and other causes, those remaining were transferred to Wilmington, North Carolina, and Richmond for exchange. In mid-April, Union General George Stoneman's cavalry entered Salisbury and destroyed the prison. The 
the main entrance to the prison compound stood 40 yards across the bridge on the right, enclosed by a wooden stockade and a deadline that inmates could be shot for crossing. The log garrison house in front is the only surviving structure used by the prison. Please do your research on this prison. It's amazing the information you can find online. What I have read to you is only what was on the sign. We left Salisbury Prison and headed for barbecue. Now they took me to this barbecue place. It was absolutely amazing. I did not run the camera because the place was pretty crowded and I didn't want to upset anybody. We stuffed ourselves stupid with barbecue. We don't have this restaurant in California. It was to die for. I can't wait to come back to have it again. After we finished dinner, we went to this place for frozen custard called Andy's. Also something I've never seen in California. I had something I believe was called the James Brown. It was amazing. I admit, Tanglewood was beautiful and it was great to tour the lights, even though it was actually even before Thanksgiving. But it was beautiful and it reminded me so much of my childhood driving around in the city to see all the lights. They had a radio station that you could tune into to listen to Christmas music while you were seeing the lights. We decided not to do that and instead put on our own music, so we listened to Psycho Stick's holiday playlist while we drove through the lights. They failed to inform me of just how massive this place was, and I'm actually kind of glad they did, because this place was huge and not at all what I was expecting. Just when I thought it couldn't get any bigger, we drove through this gate, and what do you know, the place was bigger on the other side. Hey, these squirrels, pretty creative. If you've never been to Tanglewood to see the lights, where have you been? No, seriously though, if you get the chance around the holiday season, you gotta go. It's an experience you're never gonna forget. I told Jake hitting a deer here would be a very bad idea. Yep, that's a pond with a display in it. There was a sign that told us if we rolled down our windows, we'd be able to hear these bells. We tried, and our music was a lot more interesting than just hearing some bells. Oh hey look, a gift shop? Don't mind if we do. In the center, of all of these light displays is this cute little bar and gift shop full of artisan wares. Look at that fudge. Ugh, I knew if I bought some, I would never be able to bring it home. I'd eat it all on the plane. Yes, the place kind of had this overpriced touristy vibe, but I actually didn't mind it so much. All of the stuff was handmade with a lot of love and a lot of craftsmanship. I'm from El Dorado County, California, so to me, this had a very Apple Hill vibe, which reminded me so much of home. I had so much fun just walking around, trying to find something really neat to bring home. When 99% of your travels are done with a carry-on suitcase, you've got to be very selective on what you buy to bring home to your family. I decided that my best bet was to keep everything small, like my souvenir was a pair of earrings. Everything else, I grabbed a business card so that I could buy it online and have it shipped to my house. There was this adorable hot chocolate and s'more station outside with fire pits, 
and this amazing blow up Rudolph, which we got a lot of laughs from. So if I'm remembering it right, it was $23 to get into the main gate per car load, which isn't necessarily all that bad. This was a great end to a great day of sightseeing. I'm really upset that I had that card failure at the beginning of this trip and lost two whole days worth of footage, but by the time this day came around, I'd figured out the problem and fixed it. So I was really excited that I could bring you this entire day because we had a lot of fun. Stay tuned until after the end credits for some bonus footage that I kind of just cut and threw at the end of this video. Thank you for watching everybody. Hope you're having a great time. We'll see you in the next video next week with another installment of my trip to North Carolina. Film it. Wait, I'm it. This is what we want to get. Well, obviously, she has words to say. Hi. So we made a new friend. <laughs> <laughs> a lot bigger than I thought it was. I knew it was big. That's what she said. I ain't big ride. You can't hurt. And that, let nobody talk about this giant blue rhino over here. Well, you know what? All I'm waiting for is Ace Return to come out from the back side of it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> is that a thing you guys do out here on the East Coast? Giant blue rhinos for no reason? Or is there a reason? There's a reason. Okay. You can climb into it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know what's funny? Mm. Is we have like a 55 gallon drum. So if we really want to get that New York homeless vibe, I can drag that out of the back and I can have a barrel fire. Okay, and what are we supposed to put the bodies in? <laughs> you burn the them in the barrel fire. fire. <laughs> <laughs> and I have something I needed to tell you. What? Honey, I love you. I love you. You are the love of my life. Yes, you are the love of my life. What did I do now? You didn't. It was what I did. What did you do? I cheated on your brisket, and I'm sorry, but it was delicious. <laughs> okay. Was it better? Yes. Okay, she's gonna up my game. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's, we took her to this barbecue joint in Salisbury um, that is like, was supposed to be one of the best barbecue joints like on this side of North Carolina. Uh -huh. And it's, yeah, no, th that, I like, I've got up my game too, man. Like, I, th that brisket blew both of ours out of the water. I could cut it with a plastic fork. Pretty. And warp speed, yeah. make it so. Nope. <laughs> right? Engage. Engage. <laughs>